Hello everyone, this is DA from me Academy and in the last video we have seen that we need weighted residual method for approximate the differential equation or for the approximate solution of the differential equation. Now we have to talk about the development of the weak form in this. So let's start. So this is the differential equation we have and this is the weighted integral. We have, we know what is mathematical way of writing the residual and this is the weight function and this weight function generally needs to be linearly independent to avoid inconsistency that we have faced in the last video about the example and soon we'll see that weight functions are different in weak and the strong form according to the situation we have so today our focus is on the development of the weak form so there are three steps in the development of the weak form the first step is weighted integral formulation. As we know, this is the weighted in the integral formulation. So we have to write the integral according to the differential equation we have. So here we have 0 to L. This is the weight function multiplied by the residual. So here in this case, we have to move all of the terms to the left side. So we have this thing is equal to 0. So this whole thing is equal to zero. So this is the first step. We have to write the weighted integral of the differential equation we have. Now the second step is integration by parts. Why we have to do the integration by parts? Because as the name implies that we have to do the weak formulation. So if we have to do the integration by parts on this integral, which means that we have to weaken the differentiability of this variable that we have to figure out the value of or we can also say that we have to evenly distribute the differentiation of this when we have to apply the integration by parts there is a first step and a second step according to the given situation so so this is the first and this is the second term and after applying the integration we will have this thing as you can see that in this step, there is no differentiation of the weight function, but here we have to take the derivative of the weight function, and here there are second order derivation of this variable, and here we have to take the derivative of this only once. So which means that we have evenly distributed the differentiation, and this is what the main thing in the weak formulation, um, because this has a main impact on the selection of this on the selection of what should be the approximation function or the shape function and about the boundary conditions and the third step is applying of the boundary condition we have to assume in this step that our weight functions are same as the weight functions are same as the shape functions as we know that the shape functions are phi j so in this step we have to assume that phi j is equal to the weight functions that we have and this is the, uh, this is the main assumption in this weak uh, development of the finite element method or the weak development of the differential equation we will apply the boundary condition in the third step and there are two types of boundary conditions the first one is known as essential boundary conditions and the second one is known as natural boundary condition and we will talk about these two types in the next video after applying these boundary conditions and taking this assumption we have a linear and bilinear form that is bilinear form and a linear form and we will continue from this in the next video because this is the all three steps in the formulation of the weak form and in the next video we'll talk about the difference of the essential and the natural boundary condition and we will solve an example uh, according to a specific differential equation this is for now if you're looking for more such videos then you can subscribe this channel in order to watch more upcoming videos we will meet in the next video. Till then, take care. Goodbye.